In this tutorial, I'm going to take a look at uh, explaining how you use inverse operations to solve linear equations. And actually, that's useful not just for linear ones, but we're going to take a look at linear equations here. So the first equation is 2n equals 28. Now, what an equation is, it's a statement that two different things are the same, are equal. That's why we have equal sign here. So we're saying that 2n is the same as 28 or equals 28. Now, when I say 2n, that means 2 multiplied by whatever n is. So until you solve it, we don't know what n is. The whole point is to try to find what n is. So n is a, a placeholder. It has some numerical value, and we're trying to find what that numerical value is. So what this equation, uh, I'm going to use flow charts here to show what the equation means and then how we use the inverse operations. So n is our variable. So we start with n, and uh, as I already said, 2n means multiple that n is multiplied by 2, so we multiply by 2, and then we get 28. That's the result, because that, that's what the equation says. So we have some number n that when we multiply by 2, that we get 28. So to use inverse operations, we're going to start with the 28, and we're going to do the opposite of what we did to get the 28. So the opposite of multiplying is dividing. So op the opposite of multiplying by 2 would be to divide by 2. And so what that looks like algebraically is we divide both sides by 2. You have to do the same thing to both sides. I can't just divide the left by 2 and not the right because that changes it to be a different equation that would have a different answer. Okay, so you have to do the same thing to both sides. Now, <clears throat> what happens on the left here is these 2s are said to divide out. You'll hear some people use the word cancel. Um, that's not as mathematically... Uh, a correct term. Uh, we cancel checks, but you see the twos divide out. So after you divide that two by the two that we divided by, two divided by two is one. So there's actually just a one n left on the left side. And so, and then of course, 20 divided by two is 14. So, so the way we write this is n, or I mean, if you really want to write, there's nothing algebra-wise wrong with writing 1n, but n and 1n are the same thing. So we get n equals 14. So we think that the answer is 14. So I'm going to bring my calculator over. Now the original equation was 2n equals 28. So if I take 2 and multiply it by what I think n is, okay, 2 times 14, notice that does give me 28. So that demonstrates that n, the value for n is 14. Now, let's say that you made a mistake and dividing 28 by 2, maybe you thought the answer was 15. You missed it by a little bit. So you see, if I plug 15 in place of n, 2 times 15 isn't 28, it's 30. So 15 does not uh, make the equation of the same value on both sides, or we use the words often satisfy. Satisfy means, satisfy an equation means it makes both sides have the same value. So the 15 doesn't, so 15 is not a solution, but 14 does, so 14 is a solution. There are some equations that have multiple solutions. Linear equations always just have one, but uh, there are some kinds of equations that have more than one solution. We'll be dealing with just one, ones with, ones with one here. <clears throat> so second equation is uh, x plus 7 equals 20. So we start with some number x, we want to know what x is, and you add 7, and you get 20. Okay. So the now these first two are actually they're often called one step equations because there's one step to like we multiply by two to get twenty eight or in this case we're adding seven to whatever x is to get twenty. So that's why they're called one step. And in this example here and the one on the next page there there's a second step. They're often called two step equations. So this one here, we started with x, added 7, we got 20. So we're going to start with 20, and we're going to do the inverse operation. So the inverse or opposite operation of adding 7 would be to subtract 7. So algebra-wise, what that looks like is we take the equation, and we subtract 7 from both sides. And see, what that does on the left here, see, adding 7 and subtracting 7, uh, that's the same as adding nothing, or 0. It's like if you gave someone $7 and then took the $7 right away, in the end, you really haven't given them anything because they have the same that they started with. So this uh, this plus 7 and negative 7 adds to 0, and we just left with x on the left side. And 20 minus 7 is 13, so the result is 13. So we think that x is 13. And 
if we go to our back to our calculator again and plug 13 in place of x, 13 plus 7, you see we do get 20. So that is the correct answer. You know, if, if, I, if I did the math correctly, let's say I, I did 20 minus 7, let's say I thought the answer was, I don't know, 15, for example. If I do 15 plus 7, I do not get 20, I get 22. So 15 doesn't satisfy the equation, but 13 does. So 13 is the solution. Okay, second equation here, or sorry, third one, uh, 3w minus 5 equals 19. So uh, w is our unknown number. So 3w means to multiply w by 3. So we multiply by 3, and then we subtract 5, and you get 19. Now, the reason they're done in that order is bed mass, actually. So uh, see, this is multiplying by 3. This is subtracting 5. So the multiplying is done first, and then the subtracting 5 is done after. Okay, so, so it's not the same as if we put subtract 5 and then multiply by 3. That would be different. That would not be the same. So uh, inverse operations. So we're going to start with the 19. And now we're doing the inverse operations in the inverse order. Okay, see, so we, we first multiply by 3 and then we subtract it by 5. So when we do the inverse, we're going to have to undo that first and then this. So the opposite of subtracting 5 would be to add 5. So what we do in the equations, we add 5 to both sides. And so subtracting 5 and adding 5 is really the same as doing nothing, doing 0. So that's why on the left, we're just left with 3w. And 19 plus 5 is 24. And then we do the opposite of multiplying by 3, which would be to divide by 3. So we divide by 3 both sides. And these 3s divide out, leaving us just with 1w on the left. And we get 8. 24 divided by 3 is 8. So that would be the solution. And again, I can demonstrate that it is the solution. Say 3w means 3 times w. So 3 times, I think w is 8, minus the 5. Okay, 3 times 8 minus 5 does give me 19. And if, you know, if I did the division wrong, maybe, <coughs> maybe I thought that was 9. Okay, if I made a mistake. If I thought it was 9. See, when I do 3 times 9 minus 5, I do no, not any longer get 19. I get 22. So 9 doesn't satisfy the equation, but 8 does. Now, um, before I go to the last example, so when there's more than one step here, if there's something added or subtracted for, from your term that has your unknown, then you're always undoing that first. So notice when I started doing the opposite operations here, I did the adding 5, like the opposite of subtracting 5 first, and then I did the opposite of multiplying by w. So you want to do something, and the something in this case is the add 5 first, so that you get rid of the 5, so that on the left we just have the 3w term, and then you undo the 3 times, okay, uh, last. Okay, so in, the, in this equation, that's why I do the adding 5 first to get my w term by itself, and then after that I'll do the dividing by 3. Okay, one more example on the second page here. So this one says we've got some unknown number x, we're going to divide it by 5 and add 6, and we get 18. So, uh, so we're going to start with 18, and then um, you see we're, we did the add 6 second, so we'll do that first on the way back. Okay, the opposite of adding 6 is to sub subtract 6 from both sides, so that's what this looks like. So we'll take 6 away from both sides, and the adding 6 and subtracting 6 is nothing. Okay, in the end, that's really nothing. So we're just left with x over 5, or x divided by 5, and 18 minus 6 is 12. So what that does, that subtracting 6, is it gets rid of this. So we have just x over 5, that expression with x in, all alone on itself on the left side. That's the idea first. Now, uh, next we have to undo dividing by 5. So the opposite of dividing by 5 would be to multiply by 5. So this is what we're doing both sides. And so these 5s divide out here. Um, so let me show you what this looks like. So when we multiply 5 by x, you could write that as 5x. And of course, it's over the 5 in the denominator. And how we simplify 5x divided by 5 is this 5 divides into this 5 going in one time. So there's actually a 1 coefficient left here by our x. 
So that just gives us plain old x, or if you want to write the one, you can, but x and 1x are the same thing. So that's why that simplifies to x on the left, and on the right, 12 times 5 works out to be 60. So the result is 60, so we think that x is 60. And one more time, I can bring my calculator over. So I think that x is 60, so if I go 60 divided by 5, and then plus 6, Okay, see, I do get 18. And, you know, if for some reason, let's say you multiply that wrong and you thought the answer was 70. Okay, if I put 70 here in place of x, 70 divided by 5 and then add 6. See, it does not any longer work out to what's on the right side. So 70 would not be a correct solution, but 60 is. 60 satisfies the equation because it makes both sides have a value of 18. And so that's how you use inverse operations to solve linear equations. And I hope that you found that tutorial helpful. And that's the end.